Hello, I'm JW, and uh, in this video we're looking at this uh, terrible lead which uh, we looked at in the uh, previous episode, and it's on with those uh, sleeved earth pin, the uh, end which has steel or some other components in there, and the flex which uh, it claims to be uh, 0.75, pretty obviously isn't because the uh, resistance of it is between two and three times greater than it should be, so it's either copper clad steel or uh, just it's far too thin. So uh, we'll uh, take this outside and uh, shove a, a certain amount of current through it, We'll start out with the sort of uh, up to 13 or 15 amps range, and bearing in mind this came with a 13 amp fuse, so uh, theoretically it should be able to handle that perfectly. And we'll see what kind of temperatures it gets to. Maybe it will set on fire, but if it doesn't then we can just get the other machine out and uh, turn the current up to much higher levels and uh, set it on fire anyway. So uh, in any event it's going to be destroyed, because obviously it's totally unsafe and uh, clearly uh, not sensible to use anywhere. So uh, let's go outside and see what happens. Now here's the setup of the equipment, and I've got the lead over there on the right, and I've put a solid link between two of the contacts in the plug end there, you can just see that uh, between the two points there, and those are actually connected between the neutral and earth. And obviously there's no fuse in this, so that's why we're not using the line conductor there. And the other end is plugged into that uh, old socket at the back there, and that's connected across uh, to the power supply. Now on the left side there we've got the clamp meter with the red uh, bit at the top there, that will display the current in amps. And I've also attached another meter there so we can see the voltage, and that's actually measured behind the sockets that the lead is actually plugged into. Again that displays the voltage there in volts. And the temperature of the lead uh, I've got there currently showing 15 centigrade, and that's just a uh, thermocouple type probe, and I've just cut the outer insulation of the black lead and just put the thermocouple probe inside, so that will give us an indication of the temperature of the actual wires. Now just turn on the power there, and uh, starting out there with just a very small current, about sort of 0.8 amps or so, and uh, pretty much no voltage, sort of 0.16. So uh, just increase that, and uh, see what sort of temperatures we get. Now uh, we'll start out with a current of, say, around the 10 amps uh, area, which uh, should be well within the capabilities of this piece of wire. Yeah, bearing in mind it came with that 13 amp fuse fitted in it. So there we have the current about 10.4 uh, amps and the voltage is about 2.28 volts. So the power being displaced in the lead of those two numbers multiplied together. So uh, that's just under 24 watts. And that's actually quite a lot considering this lead isn't actually designed to be a heater. And you can see the temperature is uh, rising fairly slowly there. Now up to uh, 25 centigrade. Now that's been on for uh, just over one minute, and uh, although the temperature has increased, it's uh, not exactly increasing by a lot, so I think we'll increase the current and uh, turn up to say about 13 amps, which should be the maximum theoretical rating of this device, as it came with that 13 amp fuse installed. So there we have the current uh, just over the uh, 13 amps uh, mark there, and the voltage uh, just under 3 volts there, so uh, power dissipation, again we're looking at about uh, 39 or 40 watts coming out of there. Now the temperature already increased to 45 uh, centigrade, so uh, it's certainly getting rather warm there. And again, we'll just leave this for a few minutes and see where the temperature goes to. Okay, it's been about three minutes now, and I see the current has actually fallen a bit to about 12.8 amps there, and that's uh, due to the resistance of the wire increasing as the wires heat up. And notice the temperature actually reached 73 centigrade. Now, that's actually exceeding the temperature for a PVC insulation, which is generally only rated to 70. And in any event, uh, the fact that it's 70, we wouldn't actually be wanting to touch that, because of course that's hot enough to actually cause a burn. So, far too hot there. And bearing in mind, this is only 13 amps, which is uh, supposedly what this thing was rated for, but uh, say the 13 amp fuse in the plug was obviously incorrect anyway. So, uh, I think it's time now to increase the current to a more substantial level and let's see what happens then. Now just turning up the current here, so we're now passing sort of 18, and we're coming up to the 20 amps mark, so uh, keep it around the 20 mark there, and uh, we'll see uh, how long this takes to melt or uh, do something else. Now the voltage there is about 4.9 volts, or say just under 5, and the current is just over 20 amps, so uh, we're talking about dissipation in the cable there of about 100 watts which is uh, quite a considerable amount of energy coming out of there. And again, bearing in mind, this is not even designed to heat up at all, so uh, it's uh, going to get hot pretty quickly. And you see the temperature is already exceeding 100 centigrade. And although this is an overload situation, 
20 amps is not actually a huge amount of overload considering it uh, supposedly would have been rated for 13. So again we'll just leave this on uh, for a few minutes and we'll see how hot it gets. Okay, it's been about one minute now, and we're up to 137 or so on the temperature. And uh, the wire, of course, is going to be rather soft here, so I'll just uh, poke at it with this uh, screwdriver. You can see the whole thing is uh, very sort of uh, flexible and uh, rubbery looking. And bearing in mind it's PVC, not rubber, so that's not very good. And uh, if you can actually press into it with the metal blade there, it uh, does deform the outer covering rather well. So uh, we'll keep the current on and uh, see how hot this gets to, and come back in a few minutes. Now a few more minutes have passed here and the current's actually dropped away to 19 so I think we'll just uh, crank it up to an even higher level and hopefully it will either self-destruct or uh, do something else. So uh, instead of 20 amps we'll uh, turn it up and hopefully get say something like 25. I know that doesn't sound like a huge increase uh, bearing in mind that the uh, actual heating effect will of course increase uh, far more quickly than that. So there we are just over the 25 amps uh, right there and uh, voltage uh, 7.1 volts. And notice the temperature is now increasing quite rapidly. We're up to 185 there already, and it's uh, still climbing. Now the temperature is just coming up to 200 centigrade, and if you look at the cable there, you can see some smoke uh, appearing from various parts of it, and uh, it's certainly softening and melting, certainly in the centre of the uh, wire, whether two pieces or three bits cross over. It's actually deformed quite significantly. Now just about 10 minutes into the uh, heating experiment and as you can see there's a significant amount of smoke coming off of the cables there and uh, as you can see they're deforming and uh, going out of shape uh, rather obviously and uh, temperature is now at 224 and it's still increasing and the amount of smoke is also increasing significantly and today it's not actually windy at all so of course the smoke is uh, just sort of pouring off and uh, spinning around and uh, making a mess so uh, this is obviously going to get much worse before it gets any better. Notice as the uh, heating continues, the uh, current is actually falling away. We're down, down to about sort of 22.8, and the voltage is actually increasing. And of course, that's due to the uh, resistance changing in the wires themselves. Uh, temperature is now at uh, just over 235, and a significant amount of smoke is now pouring off of all parts of the flex. Clearly, uh, this is not something you would want to be happening inside your house, and that would obviously be uh, more than capable of causing a severe burn injury if you actually touched it. Notice, however, that the fairly thin wires that are supplying this, that sort of orange piece in the background and those uh, blue and brown pieces, they're not smoking and, of course, not overheating at all, even though they're actually fairly thin as well. Now we're just coming up to 13 minutes, and I've turned up the power a bit, so the current is now up to 21, and the voltage of just under 8 volts. Uh, temperature is 250 Celsius, which of course is uh, very hot indeed, and as you can see, smoke continues to pour from all parts of the cable there. As you can see, the insulation is totally destroyed, and it's actually melting together and sort of melting to the surface that it's laying on. Clearly, uh, this cable is now totally ruined and is totally unsafe for use. Current's holding about uh, just under 21 amps there, and the voltage uh, just coming up to 8 volts. Uh, that's actually increasing because the uh, cable, of course, is now going unstable. Uh, current's now 24, and the voltage is uh, actually increasing quite considerably, as the current is as well, because something's obviously shorted inside there, which means certain parts of the cable are not going to be heating and others will do. Now the amount of smoke is increasing significantly. This of course uh, can't be uh, going on for much longer. The temperature is now at 280. Now the voltage has gone over 10 and the uh, current is now at 23, so over 230 watts being dissipated here. And notice the smoke is now changing colour and uh, getting much thicker from that central area. Now the current has actually dropped and it's fluctuating all over the place because of course the wires are shorting and failing and uh, doing all kinds of naughty things inside and uh, inevitably we're going to have to turn this off shortly. 
Now if we can actually see through the massive clouds of smoke, you'll see that there are some glowing hot pieces and it's now set on fire with thick black smoke uh, billowing from the device. So just turn off the power there because obviously that's uh, no point in putting any more power into that. I'll just put out the fire there and then we'll go in and have a closer look at the wreckage once it's uh, cooled down a bit. OK, well here's the charred remains. Uh, see the plug on the end is fairly intact, but the cable there, as you see, it's totally uh, stuck together and uh, stuck to the uh, cardboard surface that it's resting on. And uh, it's obviously uh, completely charred and burnt away. And you can see the uh, wires there, they've actually got a uh, silvery colour to them, which uh, just goes to show that they're not solid copper. Copper, of course, is not uh, silvery coloured, so uh, they're probably uh, copper-clad aluminium. As, uh, they weren't actually attracted to a magnet when we tested them before. So, of course, that accounts for the uh, excessively high resistance of them, even if they were the right size, which uh, they don't look particularly thin. So I think size-wise they were probably in the sort of right area. Clearly, though, aluminium is not a uh, substitute for copper of the same size. There's the plug, and I see the cable just actually ripped off there, so uh, again, that's totally wrecked as well. So the two end parts uh, were actually fine in terms of current carrying capacity, but, of course, the flex in the middle is what ultimately failed and melted into a pile of charred wreckage. So until next time, thanks for watching.